United we play. United we win. It's his world, and we're all just paying the rent. All hits all the time. We are family. Max Scherzer, double-digit Ks. We're busting ours to kick yours. Fun to watch. Five, 15. Respect all, fear none. Into the upper deck. Intensity is not a perfume. Hello, Utah Street. Five, four, three, two, one. One week down, about a month to go before opening day 2021. I can't believe it's already almost March. Welcome into the Mass and All Access podcast, everybody. Bobby Blanco here from the safety of my own home in Washington, D.C. Hope you guys are all tuning in live, joining us live on Facebook, YouTube, on Twitter, at Mass and Nationals across the board. Be a part of the conversation, a part of the uh, the, uh, the the broadcast, the show, if you will, uh, throughout the course of the day. We've got a jam-packed show for you. I'm going to bring on my co-host, Amy Jennings, who is, of course, uh, coming to us via Zoom from the safety of her own home. Uh, Amy, thank you so much for joining me. How are you? What's the hap? What's the sitch? I'm, I'm good. I'm in a great mood. It's beautiful outside. I imagine it feels a little bit like it does at spring training, right? The snow on the ground is melting. Feels like baseball season, and we get to talk about real baseball. It's actually being played now, Bobby. So that makes our our jobs easier and our lives a lot more exciting. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm the same way. I mean, I, I again, I didn't want to be that podcast that just talks about the weather uh, to start up every show, but I mean, it's a significant difference at least these past two days here in the D.C. area than over the past uh, couple of uh, weeks that we've been doing the show. So that's always nice. Uh, if we don't have Davey uh, Martinez bragging too much about the nice weather down there compared to up here, we've been able to kind of uh, battle back with some sunshine. So, yeah, it feels like baseball. It feels like spring. I was able to crack the windows a little open in the house, get some fresh air in. It's been, it's been feeling good. I'm, I'm in a great mood, too, uh, Amy. We've got a great show. we got a lot of sound. We heard from a lot of people over the course of the week from West Palm Beach. You're going to hear from Davey, from Mike Rizzo, some more clips from his first press conference, uh, Max Scherzer, Alex Avila. Um, and in the Harris uh, Harrisburg pitching coach, because we're going to talk a lot about uh, prospects over the course of this podcast um, and, and who Nats fans should be looking out for in spring training um, in terms of prod, uh, pod, uh, excuse me, uh, prospects who could possibly make their debut in 2021 or even down the line. Uh, but first, Amy, I, I, I got to put you on the spot because last week I, I charged you with uh, coming up with a dark horse to make the opening day roster, that's how we concluded last week's podcast. You did not come up with one, so I made sure to write it down, and you have to bring up one right now at this top of the show. Who's your dark horse to complete last week's podcast uh, to make the opening day roster uh, in just a few weeks? All right. Out of all of the minor league signings and the guys competing for that last spot, I'm going to go with Hernan Perez. Uh, just because out of the guys that we talked about last week, uh, Jordy Mercer and um, – Yasmani Tomas, all that those guys. Um, Hernan has the most defensive versatility, right? And that's what's going to be most important in that utility spot. He's played every single position in the majors except for a catcher. He's pitched seven innings. Um, he's played the most games at third base, but he can play both corner outfield spots, uh, can move around the infield a little bit. And that's what the Nationals need. They could need that fifth outfielder, or maybe they need some backup at third base if Carter Keyboom struggles. So you never know. Um, that's going to be my dark horse to, to do well at spring training and, and make the roster. All right, that is a true, true dark horse. Uh, I'm not sure too many Nationals fans even recognize that name. Uh, And you're definitely taking over my dark horse. Mine was Luis Garcia, and we even debated last week if he even counts as a dark horse to make it. He is a dark horse just because he played so many games last year. Yeah, that's true. So so that's a a great one. Uh, We'll write it down, make a note of it, and we'll come back to it uh, in a couple of weeks. Because like I said, I mean, March, I can't believe March is already here. March 1st is Monday, which is crazy. The Nationals play their first spring training game on Sunday against the Cardinals. Uh, I I just, I mean, it's this first week, it it felt like it was such a long wait to get to this point. And then now we're already a week into it and and games are starting soon. And we're going to have, you know, significant position battles to discuss uh, to get to the opening day roster in just a few short weeks. Yep. And it, it was, I think today there's some confusion about whether the, some of these spring training games were going to be, to be aired on mass. And it sounds like a few, some of them will be, and some of them will be aired, um, aired online also. So that'll be exciting to, to get to see some baseball and clear up some of that confusion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The nationals announced the radio broadcasting schedule 
uh, for spring training for a select spring training games. I think seven of them will be broadcast on nationals.com. The rest will be on 106.7 The Fan or the Team 980 locally here in D.C. So, yeah, hopefully uh, it doesn't seem like we, we, we don't really we're not really in the know. We're just here to podcast and, and upload videos and stuff. But uh, hopefully we'll be able to broadcast some television games for you throughout the course of the next month or so. Um, all right. Now that last week's podcast is officially in the books and we have wrapped up that conversation, let's get on going into this week's episode uh, and, and what we want to talk about. We figure, you know, there's going to be a lot like we've always talked about, Amy. This is not a rebuilding team. There's not too much focus on the prospects uh, in Major League Spring Training this year. There's just too many other storylines, too many other big names to get um, ahead of first. Uh, so while the prospects are at the major league camp, right? We want to talk about them while we're getting some good looks. Like I said, we got a lot of sound from guys, audio from uh, from players and coaches, um, people who have seen these guys up close and personal. Because you know, of course, we are not down there in West Palm Beach. We can't watch them throw their bullpens or get their work in, whatever it may be. So we're relying on these Zoom calls to get information from Davey and and then some of the other players. And, you know, at some point, these guys are not no longer going to be with the major league club uh, and, and be off to the side working with the minor leaguers. So we figured this would be the great opportunity to talk about them while we have fresh eyes on them and we have an influx of information um, and and before they get sent down and we can start talking more about the major league club. But, and Amy, I mean, this this is a bright looking future. I mean, the Nationals have done themselves a really good service and credit to Mike Rizzo, of course, of of. Uh, you know, building a competitive major league team and despite the rankings, having very successful prospects in the minor leagues waiting to come up. And that's how you sustain success uh, through a course of a couple of years by having guys ready uh, to come up at any given uh, moment to c- contribute to the big league club. Uh, and it's kind of a continuous cycle of, of bringing guys up and um, drafting guys and developing them. Um, and, w- and that's how you field a competitive team year in and year out. Exactly. The best teams in baseball do that, right? And I feel like we kind of give uh, the Nationals farm system a bad rap and sometimes rightfully so not having any prospects being the only team without a prospect on the top 100 list. But really, once we, we kind of got looking at some of these players and players that can make their debuts this year, um, they've been doing their job. They've been drafting pitchers and developing pitchers, and there's some guys that could be ready to come up this year. And really, they do have some talent in this farm system, and you're going to get a good look at them over spring training. And we're going to get into some of the, the top guys you could see, see um debut this year yeah and uh it's exciting i think it's you know you and i are very interested i think we've done you've done a couple of minor league trips and we're going to hear from one of the trips that you've made over the course of the years and just a little bit later in the show uh and and, you know i've tried to do a a strong focus on some of the minor league guys because we feel like that's not a part of the nationals organization that gets enough credit and that's you know due to part the major league team doing so well over the course of the year so no fault of their own but you know, I, I think it's it's worth taking a deep dive and a look at some of the names that, you know, will be a part of this Nationals team two, three years down the line. We've talked about that many a times, Amy. Uh, it, it, you know, it is, we're not going to have Max Scherzer, Ryan Zimmerman, Steven Strasburg around forever. You know, some of those guys are on one-year deals or on the last year of their deal. And so this team's going to look quite different from the team that fans have grown accustomed to over the past handful of seasons. Uh, in just a few short years. So it's 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 good to get used to and, and know some of the names um, that we're going to be talking about. And you'll see in Nationals uniforms, hopefully, in, in just a little bit. But real quick, uh, before we get into what we're seeing and hearing um, from uh, uh, down West Palm Beach and what the Nationals uh, our prospects are looking like in their first Major League Spring training, uh, we did have Mike Rizzo and David Martinez address both of those uh, questions early on in camp and, and they set their expectations pretty high for some of their top prospects, Kate Cavalli, Jackson Rutledge, namely uh, in the start of their first big league camp. So here, let's t- take a quick listen to what Mike Rizzo and Dave Martinez have come to expect from these guys as they uh, transition to a big league spring training. You know, keep, keep their ears open, uh, their mouth closed and, and just observe how some of the great pitchers in uh, in Major League Baseball, prepare for a season. 
uh, and uh, show us what you got. We, you know, they, they they have a season to prepare for also, and uh, it's, uh, you know, going to be an important season for them. Uh, uh, and, uh, and we, uh, we just want them to uh, uh, observe how some of the best in the business, you know, get their job done and to, you know, kind of, uh, if you're going to emulate somebody, uh, we've got some good candidates to emulate that, uh, that can, uh, that can really teach a young player, especially a young pitcher, you know, how to conduct himself how to prepare himself and how to get, you know, get the most out of his performance. And uh, that's kind of what, what, uh, what we're, uh, what we're looking at with those young guys. And, and again, we want, we want to see those guys pitch uh, and, uh, and, you know, who's to say that they won't help us sometime in, in, as early as 2020, they have the, the, the size, the, the delivery, the stuff, the, the mental makeup to, uh, to uh, be impact pl- uh, pitchers in the big leagues. And, you uh, as we've shown in the past, we're not afraid to bring young players to the big leagues when, when maybe other people in the industry think it's too early. Yeah, I just, I, I, you know, I, I saw them both yesterday, throw, and obviously they both threw the ball really well. Um, I just want them to come in here and learn, you know, uh, become, you know, be a sponge and learn. You know, I tell them all, I said, hey, you got some unbelievable veteran pitchers here. You know, watch them, you know, talk about routines and just learn, learn, you know, learn and, and, and take what you learn and absorb it and, 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 and build, you know, and get some kind of routine. So um, those guys are good though. You know, you know, they're very poised for, for young men. Um, so I'm looking forward to watching them, watching them uh, become big league pitchers, but they, they all, they all have the ability to do that. You know, I saw two guys today in Peterson and Dyson who, uh, who have electric stuff. They threw the ball really well you know, around the plate, which is something I always look for. Uh, they threw strikes. So, you know, we, you know, when I look at these guys and I look at what we have in camp, you know, our, our future with pitching is, is bright. I mean, we got, we got some really good arms. Adon today threw the ball really well. Uh, uh, Klobo, who's, you know, six, eight, you know, threw the ball really, really well for us today. So, um, you know, I'm just looking forward to watching these guys and getting them in the game. You know, I, you know, I, I spoke to all of them that they, you know, they're going to get in the game. They're going to pitch. They're going to, you know, get some innings, and, and but I don't want anything to change. I just, you know, the biggest thing for me is is strike one. You know, uh, command the strike zone. You know, and, and I think they all know that. Keep your eyes open and your mouth shut. That's the advice from Mike Rizzo, general manager of the, uh, the Nationals, for some of the young guys. And that seems kind of harsh, but generally he did, he just wants them to learn. And, and Dave Martinez echoed that sentiment in his part of that uh, sound bite, Amy. You know, these guys are young guys, 21, 22 years old, first major league camp, and you've got guys like Max Scherzer, Steven Strasburg, John Lester, Patrick Corbin, guys who have won world championships, Cy Youngs, uh, World Series MVPs, uh, to sit around and watch and listen and learn from over the course of uh, the next couple of weeks. Right. I mean, for these weeks, you're literally around some of the best pitchers in the game, and it's a great chance to exactly sit back, shut up, absorb the information, see how they prepare Um, and get used to that whole process. Plus, it's a good opportunity for these major league coaches and higher-ups in the front office to see these guys. Um, I think sometimes major league coaches, their their eyes get turned away. Obviously, they're busy with with their own team, their own roster. Um, They kind of get mixed up in the shuffle once the minor league season starts. But this is a great chance for them to see what they can do. And then when push comes to shove and it's time to bring somebody up, there's people there to vouch for them. Uh, It was kind of like that with Juan Soto. I mean, obviously, they're going to hurry up position players in this organization a lot more than they are pitchers. Um, But there were people higher up um, in the front office there that were were pushing for Juan Soto. And there were some questions and they said, no, this is your guy. Um, And even though these are the number one and number two prospects, um, one day somebody's going to have to vouch for them. And this is a great chance for them to see them, see what they're capable of and uh, for them to showcase what they can do. That's that's a great point too. I mean, it didn't even occur to me that that's the, you know how Juan Soto got that call at such a young age because scouts who had seen him in spring training and and with the minor league club told Mike Rizzo, no, he's ready. Um, and, and you know that a, a, any moment that you have in spring training to pitch in front of not just Mike Rizzo, David Martinez, uh, but all the other scouts and minor league coaches that are around, anytime you have a chance to show off your skill set, it's going to only help you further down the line because they'll have more information on you and be able to back you up, just like you said. Uh, on my little blurb on MassInSports.com that I kind of wrote about the, um, off that little soundbite and what the expectations are for um, these young guys, specifically Cavalli and Rutledge, you know, I made the comparison, the analogy 
uh, that arriving to spring training is like arriving to high school. And then if the, these rookies are like the freshmen arriving on campus, wide eyed, uh, not knowing where everything is. And the upperclassmen are your veterans like Scherzer and, and Strasburg and Lester. Uh, and then, uh, you know, your coaches are your your teachers, your principals, your general manager, yada, yada, yada. Uh, and, you know, just be and just because, you know, that your coaches and then the general manager are watching as well doesn't mean that the upperclassmen aren't taking a look either. And and that's something that uh, Max Scherzer was asked about. You know, the guy, this is a guy that has won a World Series, multiple Cy Youngs, a future Hall of Famer. He was asked what he's expecting to see from young pitchers in their first major league camp. Uh, and he gave a thoughtful answer as well. Take a listen. Yeah, um, you just just watch how they go about their business. Uh, you know how they are preparing for the season, what they what they're trying to do with the baseball, and try to understand you know what what they can can't do with the baseball, what makes them good, um, and you know just try to highlight highlight little just try to highlight little things that make them better. Uh, always uh, you know being a prospect is great, but being a major leaguer is being better. And so you know what's it going to take for these guys to be great at the major league level is the ultimate driving force for these guys. And so. Um, just being around them and, uh, and trying to give them uh, any little tidbit you can to help them out. Uh, you know, that's what that's what you're supposed to do as a veteran. I love that line of being a prospect is great, but being a major leaguer is is better. And, and he's right, Amy. Of course, like these guys are here to be professional ball players. They're here to make the major leagues and provide to the major league club. Their time is just not right now. So, what can you show right now at spring training uh, in front of these coaches that? proves that you have the stuff and everyone knows about competitive stuff. It's Max Scherzer. Yeah, exactly. And it's, um, we'll hear from Mike Rizzo, but he, he even said like, obviously these guys are a few years out, but who says they can't help us this year? You know, Um, who says their time isn't yet. And, you know, this is a great opportunity for them to showcase what they do and where they're at um, and the progress that they've made, because it's been so long since, since we've seen these guys uh, pitch, um, especially Kate Cavalli, obviously, because all we've seen is, is him at the alternate camp. So it's, it's really going to be sometimes a little bit of other than fall instructs, the first looks that they're getting at these guys. Yep. And now that we're a weekend, Amy, uh, they've got a good look, and they've seen what they can do. It's not just throwing on the first couple of days like some of those bits were from, those or those sound bites were from last week, but we've had some even more updated uh, information on these guys from just a couple of days ago. David Martinez spoke um, on Sunday kind of unpromptly, too. It's, it's actually kind of funny to me how many times that Davey Martinez brings up these guys unprompted and he just off the cuff mentions how much, how impressive they are, how impressive he is by Cavalli and Rutledge and some other names too, which we'll touch on in a little bit. And also Alex Avila uh, mentioned yesterday about how he watched Kate Cavalli throw a ball. He didn't even catch him. He just watched him and was very impressed by him. So you got a veteran catcher like that already seeing the stuff from a young pitcher, but not even catching him just by watching a bullpen session is pretty impressive Real quick, let's get to those sound bites real, uh, right now. Here's Davey Martinez from earlier this week on Sunday and Alex Avila from yesterday talking about what's impressed them about Kay Cavalli and others so far in spring training. You know, we got, like I said earlier, we have some youngsters that um, are really going to help us in the near future, and I'm excited about that. Any, uh, you want to elaborate on that when the, when you say the youngsters, maybe a few that um, just in these past four days that have really caught your eye? Or, you know, we had so many, you know, but, you know, Cavalli threw today, threw the ball well. Rutledge threw the ball well. Romero, who we saw a little bit last year, threw the ball really well. Bramer, I mean, all these guys, I mean, they, they, so far they, they look good. So I'm um, really excited, you know, to, to get them, get some games in here soon and, and get them in a game and see how they see how they are against against hitters. Everyone's looked uh, looked really good. Um, got a pretty good look at Cavalli actually today, and he looked really impressive, but a lot of good young arms on this team. Okay, well now we all want your Cade Cavalli assessment then. <laughs> uh, he was pretty electric today uh, in his live BP. Um, I wasn't catching him, but I was watching. And, um, you know, between all of his pitches, his fastball, change up, and then and, uh, and his breaking ball, it was uh, it was impressive. He's got some tremendous stuff, and, and uh, uh, it'll be fun to kind of watch his progression. Impressive stuff. I mean, just from, again, like I said, uh, only a couple of weeks, but I think Alex Avila kind of off the cuff too. I mean, that first part was the trail end of a question he was answering 
to start off his press conference, and he just brought up Cavalli. You know, he was being asked about veteran pitchers, and he brought up Cavalli. So pretty impressive that they're already drawing the attention of some of the veteran players. Obviously, the major league coaching staff already, um, and they're showing their stuff pretty early on. Yeah, exactly. And some things to look for is we know Kate Cavalli is working on pitching away from his fastball, using more two seamers. We know Rutledge command has always been kind of an issue with him. So he's working on repeating his delivery to improve his fast fastball command. And he's also work, working on developing his slider, which made that he made really good progress on that um, at the alternate site coaches were saying, and he, he'll continue to develop that over spring training. So those are some things to keep an eye out. Um, to look for those two guys, but just that these players, these managers, GMs are speaking so highly of these two top prospects is really good in in Cavalli's first spring training and same with Rutledge. Yeah, and and that's that's a good breakdown of what of the kind of stuff that they're working on because those are pretty generic. You know, praises from guys like uh, Martinez, Scherzer, and, and uh, Avila uh, heading into spring training. These guys aren't. You haven't. You know. <laughs> studied Cavalli and Rutledge since they were drafted at all. You know, that's not part of their job. Part of their job uh, is just now teaching them right now. But those duties do fall underneath uh, minor league pitching coaches. And, Amy, you got to catch up with the Harrisburg pitching coach last fall, who obviously has done a lot of work with uh, Jackson Rutledge. Uh, he helped scout uh, Kay Cavalli and work with them at the Fall Instructional League um, and, and some of the other young pitchers that we're about to talk about, too. Yeah, Sam Naren. I mean, Ball Instructs was the first time that he got to see Kate Cavalli. He was really impressed um, with his stuff, impressed with some other guys like um, Matt Cronin. And a name that you don't hear a whole lot is Gabe Klobitz, who he was really impressed with. And um, we're going to hear from from him now. I talked to him right after Fall Instructs and some things that he was impressed with and what he saw out of these guys. Well, I got to see Matt Cronin really for the first time. Uh, he was in spring training last year, but I didn't get to see a whole lot of him because it was cut short, but he really impressed. He he has a, a, a really, really nice repertoire that plays well. He's got a really good fastball and a really good curveball that, that match very well. Uh, it gives the hitters fits. Uh, again, he was another guy coming into that alternate site that needed to refine some things, and he took advantage of it and really did. Uh, he had... The, he had his last inning of instructional league. He actually threw an immaculate inning of nine straight fastballs, and they swung at every one of them. I've never seen anything like that. It's funny you watch these guys. When I played, you saw fastballs at 90-93. Now you're seeing Kate Cavalli come up, and his changeup is 90-93. So, uh, but because he's got that good of a fastball, and it plays. So. Uh, it was fun to watch him go about his business. He, he is a very mature kid, knows what he needs to do, knows how to prepare, and uh, the sky's the limit for him for sure. And we're always looking for that diamond in the rough that maybe was a non-drafted free agent or a late-round pick that uh, uh, could step in. Gabe Clovis, it comes to mind with that. The guy that was a, late, he was a mid to late 30th rounder uh, a couple years ago. He's coming off of Tommy John. He's, he came into that camp looking great, uh, had, had taken care of himself and, and gotten a lot of simulated innings in over the break. So he's a guy that, that uh, the, the player development staff has, has really brought along from a guy that wasn't highly touted to now a guy that, hey, he's got a chance to, to contribute at the big league level. I don't know what's more impressive there, Amy, was uh, either his knowledge on these young guys who haven't been here that long or your camera skills – conducting that interview for those watching on Facebook or YouTube or Twitter, uh, positioning the camera, doing the FaceTime on your cell phone with the bobbleheads in the background. That's some, that's some good stuff right there, uh, Amy. Well, we have to make these virtual interviews work, right? Make them look like kind of half good. Um, but yeah, exactly. I mean, he's the guy who's going to be right in the mix of these guys' development and their learning. Um, and another guy that was really high on Cavalli in the first looks that he got from him and what stood out to me there and I put him down as a name to note at spring training was Gabe Klobositz. Um, he was a guy who was drafted in the 36th round back in 2017 and obviously not a highly touted prospect and kind of has gotten lost in the mix. Um, but he, he has worked his way through this organization and, and the player development staff has clearly devoted a lot of time to him, which means that 
they don't view them just as an organizational player anymore. And the way that they're cutting minor league teams now, there really aren't a whole, there's not room for a whole lot of those anymore. They're guys that are going to have to eventually see them at the big league level, or they're not going to keep them around. Um, so he's the guy that this organization's probably pretty high on at this point. And you could look to see him make a major league debut, especially if the bullpen um, is in true Nationals form, they might need some help by the middle of the season. And Gay Klobositz could be a guy that's right in the mix. Um, he's a big guy, 6'7". Uh, he gets mixed and lost in the shuffle. You probably don't hear his name a whole lot, but you could hear his name uh, sometime either this year or maybe next season. Yeah, I mean, we actually did hear his name. I mean, I... I... Davey has mentioned his name a couple of times, and he just, he goes by Clo, calls him Clobo, and you wonder like, well, who's that? Because he's not on the major league rosters. You have to dig a little deeper. He's an under, I mean, he's not ranked in any previous or recent national top prospect rankings, so you wouldn't see him on the likes of MLB Pipeline or Baseball America. Um, he is probably one of the older guys we'll talk about today in terms of the prospects making their basketball debuts. Uh, he's already 25 years old. He was a, um, uh, a 2017 36th round pick, so he's probably one of the guys who were drafted later, uh, not as high as some of these other guys that we're going to talk about too. But, you know, he's I think he's getting close to up there, you know, and high praise from, you know, Harrisburg pitching coach, from Dave Martinez, like I said, who has mentioned him a couple of times. Uh, his age and the, the time that he's been around this organization already, a handful of seasons going into his fourth season uh, I guess third full season with the Nationals. Maybe not even if you don't want to count 2020. Whatever it may be. Um, you know, he is uh, has his name around. And Davey now, you know, this is his fourth season with the team too. So he's probably more familiar with him than any other prospects we're going to be talking about because he came in around the same time that Davey did. Um, and, and they've seen each other at spring training. So it's. I think this is a guy that we could see. I, I agree with you. And, and I like the frame. The size that you mentioned, that's just a very prototypical Nationals pitcher. And whether or not he uh, they foresee him as a starter or, or, or a bullpen relief arm or a long arm, that remains to be seen. But he definitely fits the mold that Mike Rizzo likes to bring into this organization. And like he said in this end of his soundbite, they're not afraid to bring up guys uh, to help the Major League Club whenever they deem them ready. Yeah, exactly. And I just have one more arm to look at before I'll get into my possible debuts, and that's Jeffrey Rodriguez who is back. Uh, the Nationals signed him out of the Dominican Republic back in 2012. He was in the Young Gomes trade to Cleveland. Um, and now he's back on, on, a, on a minor league um, deal with an invite to, to spring training. Um, and we don't know what his future with the Nationals is, if he'll stick around, if maybe, you know, he's there. We'll, we'll kind of see how that shakes out over the next few days, how they use him. Um, if he's going to be a bullpen guy, a starter, we'll see how that works out. But he's a guy that could be competing for, for a spot on this roster. Um, he, he was really, I mean, he was in the system for a lot of years, really didn't make it above single A ball until 2018, where he just kind of bolted through the, through the minors um, and ended up making eight starts, I think. Got three wins for the Nationals before he was traded to Cleveland. Um, and that worked out well for Mike Rizzo because he's kind of coming off of a high note. Um, didn't do so well for Cleveland. Has had shoulder, back issues. Um, but we'll see through spring training how, he, how he's doing. Does he look healthy? Is he competing for a spot on this roster? How they're using him? Um, and he's a guy t- t- to keep your eye on throughout spring training. Yeah, and uh, uh, looking at his numbers right now, he, he's pitched in 24 games in the major leagues. Of course, back in 2018, like you mentioned with the Nats, uh, 19 with the Indians. He didn't make an appearance in 2020, and then Cleveland uh, non-tendered him this past off season. ERA doesn't look fantastic, but the strikeout numbers are there. The WHIP isn't great, but yeah, you know he's not that. I think he is, in fact, the oldest guy we're going to talk about. He's 27. Um, but, you know, he doesn't have that much experience. You would think a guy that's been around this long, and Nats fans are probably very familiar with his name from his time here in D.C., uh, but you would think that, he, you know, he would have a little more games under his belt, and he just doesn't have that yet, which is almost a good thing for the Nationals. He's almost still very raw, and he had the year off, so like you mentioned, hopefully he's coming in healthy, um, ready to go, and ready to prove himself in his second go-around with a team that he has had uh, plenty of experience with, he's familiar with, uh, in terms of going back in 2018, Davey knows him. I think Davey has mentioned him a couple of times as well. As ha- excited to have him back. Um, and, and, you know, when you have a guy that was on waivers, out there, able to pick up for little to no cost, 
and you're familiar with, you already have your scouting reports on, it kind of just takes out the middleman in the sense of there's not that much of that time getting familiar with him once he gets to West Palm Beach. Once he gets to spring training, they're already pretty familiar, he's already familiar, and then get to work right away. Exactly. And you mentioned raw, and that's kind of it, is uh, he's still developing those secondary pitches, but he he has the frame, he has what they want in a pitcher, he looks like a pitcher, um, and it, it's just developing and getting there. I mean, he's been in this organization so long, or was in this organization so long, it seems like it's time he needs to get there. Um, but but the ability is there, you can see it. Um, and we'll see what he does through spring training, if he'll be competing for a spot on this roster and the future of Jeffrey Rodriguez back in back in D.C. Yeah, that 6'6 six, six frame he's got, I mean, he's pretty similar to Wando Swear, just a very tall, thin presence on the mound. But, you know, with that arm span, with that arm span and the, that length that he has, that he can release the ball probably closer to the plate than most other pitchers that you're going to see which makes him a very valuable asset coming out of the bullpen and can get some some needed outs, much like a Wander Suero, uh, if he's called a pod. So it's good to have him back in situation. Again, just adds more options, adds more depth. Uh, the Nationals are very excited to add this depth to their bullpen. Uh, all right, so we heard a lot about these guys right off the top. Um, let's get out of, not get them out of the way, but because they're the most probably familiar names, guys, that people are most interested in hearing about is Kay Cavalli, Jackson Rutledge, the number one, the number two prospects in the system, whatever order you want to put them in. Uh, starting with Kay Cavalli, I mean, I, I was just impressed, like I said earlier, how much we heard about Cade early on in the season, or early on in the spring training. I thought it would take a while, uh, at least a couple of weeks, maybe get him into a game or so before guys or people started really asking about him. Um, we got to hear more about it, but Davey, has not afraid to drop his name. Uh, you know, we haven't seen him play professional baseball yet. Of course, uh, he his his uh, junior year at Oklahoma was cut short in 2020. Didn't have a minor league season this past year. Uh, was at the Nationals alternate training site in Fredericksburg. Uh, went to Fall Instructs League in, in West Palm Beach this past fall. Now here in his major league spring training. So he's been around. It feels like he's been around for a while. You just haven't seen him in a game situation. And Davey's excited to give him that opportunity once the games start on Sunday. Right. It's tough, especially for these pitchers, um, is that it probably feels like they've been out of the game so long. I mean, the alternate training site was really great for these top prospects because they, they got to be there with those guys. They get, got to keep um, developing. Uh, but they haven't played in real games in probably what seems like forever. And Cavalli has never gotten to play a game in this organization. Um, so this year will be really telling for his future, what they see out of him, uh, and what he can do. But but the the outlook is great. Yeah, uh, very good. He he projects to be uh, a frontline starter, and I think a lot of the questions that we've we're getting from fans and people who are on MassInSports.com in the comments section are, you know, what are these guys upside? And while I don't, I wouldn't put money on either him or Rutledge making their debuts in twenty twenty one. Uh, but I wouldn't say absolutely 0% chance. I, I think they have a chance, and whether that's going to I don't think they'll throw him in a, spar, a starting position, uh, but maybe a bullpen option at some point. Uh, that had come up uh, late last year in terms of uh, what, what are the chances that the Nationals pull them up for possibly a stretch run, or even when they were eliminated from the postseason, why not give them um, some uh, major league experience when it's not going to count against their service time? Um, so a lot of people are asking, what is their upside? What do the Nationals see them as? I, for Cavalli, for sure, I, it's got to be a frontline starter. And like I said earlier, you know, this is the last year of Max Scherzer's deal. John Lesser's on a one-year deal. We're not sure about the fifth starter spot moving forward. Uh, Strasburg, of course, has a couple more years left after his extension or re-signing, I should say. And, and Corbin has a long deal here. But there are going to be rotation spots opening up in the next handful of years. And I, I would think that Mike Rizzo envisions Cavalli taking one of them uh, in maybe not 2022, but probably 2023. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Kate Cavalli, as great as he is, he probably still has a lot of development to go, especially after not having, not jumping into any type of minor league season last year. Um, but definitely, I'm sure they imagine him taking over one of those starting positions, especially as this rotation ages out. They're kind of, with this organization and all of the plethora of pitching, 
um, they're setting themselves up in a really good uh, position for these young guys to move up, developing within and take over the taking over those rotation spots. I think for Rutledge, it's a little bit more up in the air, whether they're going to view him as a long reliever, a starter. Like I said, he's working on that slider. Uh, maybe that that could that pitch could depend on where he ends up. Uh, working on his command, which is he's really struggled with. But Sam Naren said he looked really good at fall instructs. Um, and I'm sure he'll continue to work on that over spring training. But those guys' development, not hurrying them, is going to be really important because you push them up there, you shove them up there, they have a couple bad starts. That could put a, a little uh, stent in their development. Yeah, I, 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 that's the great the thing about the Nationals, too. I think they do a really good job, uh, and Mike Rizzo, uh, of balancing that, you know, rushing a guy to the major leagues, um, and no, this guy's ready. He can help right now. And, you know, it dates all the way back to Steven Strasburg. Uh, and, and, you know, obviously his debut and guys like Eric Fetty, Austin Voth making their debuts. Joe Ross, uh, once they acquired him, uh, you can even, you know, uh, throw in Lucas Giolito in that mix as well to an extent. But, yeah, I, I think that that's going to be the thing, right? With these two guys, they're number one, number two overall prospects. I, I don't think Rutledge has as high of a ceiling in terms of frontline starter as Cavalli does, um, at least according to some of the reports that I, I've read up on. Um, it doesn't mean he can't do it, and the Nationals obviously hope that he can do it. These are probably two of the guys that they hope to be, you know, their one-two punches in a couple of years or at least filling out the rotation. But I don't think he's got the, uh, you know, number one ace potential that maybe Cavalli does, which is pretty crazy going back to Cade Cavalli, considering that he was a two-way player back in Oklahoma for his first couple of seasons and, and all throughout high school. And now he's developed into this frontline starter potential pitcher. But Jackson Riley doesn't mean that he doesn't have the capabilities to do to do that either. And you mentioned the fastball. He's got a command. The numbers that I just flashed up on the screen um, look pretty solid too. That dating back to his 2019 season in the minor leagues. Um, so I, I think Rutledge, they have high expectations for him. Well, albeit it might not be as high as Kate Cavalli's, but I mean, I, I think that they can uh, expect some good things from him and, and be a contributor in the rotation at some point. Mm -hmm. And right now it's kind of hard to tell until they get back on a pitching regimen and they're without a minor league season. I mean, they're not putting the innings, the miles on that arm that they're used to. Um, and that could be telling once you see them in season form, pitching every so many days, how they use them in and out of the bullpen um, as a starter, that'll be telling. But when you're just at an alternate site or you're just at spring training and you're not getting that real in season um, action, it's kind of hard to tell where they're going to slot, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, especially with Cavalli, his first major league camp, his first full season as a major leaguer, um, and then Rutledge, you know, having the year off with no minor league team, you know, where are they going to be? And Rutledge is only 21. Kay Cavalli is older than him. He's only 21 years old. Jackson Rutledge as the number one overall prospect, finishing per MLB pipeline dot com last year so um it's you know there's a lot of expectations for them but you know there is time and, and while we may see them this year they're both of their etas according to moe pipeline are 2022 so it's more likely we see them next year and we also see mike rizzo not just with position players you know talking about going back with uh, Juan Soto, Luis Garcia, Carter Keeboom, wanting them to play every day. They're going to want these guys to pitch every fifth day and there's not a spot for them on the major league roster they're not going to be up here mm -hmm. We talked about that with Luis Garcia, too. That's why he's, he, you want him to get at bats every day. You don't want him to come up and be sitting on the bench. Same thing with these guys. It's getting into that routine, pitching every five days is really important to their development. Um, and not to mention, these two guys both have injury history. We know the Nationals love that. Um, and they seem healthy. They look healthy so far at spring training. But you never know when that's going to creep and crawl out. Um, so, so hopefully they're healthy, they stay healthy, but that's kind of something to consider in the mix as well. Absolutely. And especially with the time, like I just said, the time that they've had off, you know, in, in one sense, that's a good thing. They've been able to rest and not put themselves in harm, harm's way in terms of pitching every day, but also how is your arm going to react to ramping back up? I mean, it's a, that's gotta be a very meticulous and slow and, and steady process to get back to playing every day, throwing every day. Um, after basically having a year off, not that they sat around and did nothing all year, but you know what I mean? It's not the same as working out throughout the course of a regular season um, and, and, you know, throwing probably I mean, in the minor leagues, they probably pitched, make 20, 25 starts uh, and compared to none last year. So that is going to be an interesting process to keep it on the guys, not just the major leaguers, but the minor leaguers too, who didn't have 
uh, any kind of season last year. They barely got camp underway last spring. So that's going to be something to keep an eye on as well. Other names, Amy, uh, you know, the number three overall guy, uh, now that Will Crow has been traded to the Pirates for Josh Bell, is Cole Henry. And this is a guy who was a second-round pick uh, in 2020, just this past year. The Nationals selected him right after selecting Kate Cavalli uh, out of LSU. And, and he's got some high upside, too. I, 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 do, I don't think... He gets talked enough about in terms of how much of a big, how big of a prospect he is uh, for uh, the Nationals. I don't expect him to make any kind of major strides in terms of debuting in 2021, but I think he's got potential to possibly, uh, you know, have a really big minor league year and then be in that mix in this conversation this time next year. Right. I mean, and he, the big thing about him is his command, right? He's consistent. He throws strikes and that's, what's so important. If you're going to slot somewhere in a big league rotation, um, he has the possibility of being a mid rotation starter one day uh, because he's so consistent and because he throws strikes and it's kind of the opposite of what we're talking about with Jackson Rutledge command being an issue, Cole Henry, that's what they're all in on. And um, he's looked good and he, he, he has the possibility of we're seeing him soon, whether it's going to be this year, probably more likely next year. Um, he's a big name that, that nationals fans could see. Yeah. And then a couple more, I mean, it's just so many pitchers. It's all pretty much pitchers. <laughs> we've talked a lot about how their top prospects are, are starting pitching guys. Um, but we briefly touched on them a little bit already, but Tim Kate, Matt Cronin, um, there are left-handers. All the other previous guys we talked about are righties, but these are the left-handers that the Nationals are kind of counting on. Um, whether or not they profile to be starting pitchers, that still brings up to be seen. Uh, they're young, both 23 years old. Um, but, you know, we, we could see them sooner rather than later. And, and they're a lefty arm that the Nationals might envision as a bullpen piece as early as this year, if they need it, because we've also talked about how much they don't have too many lefties in the, in the bullpen. It's, it's Brad hand. Uh, it's maybe Ben Bramer. And, and that's the end of the list pretty much heading into spring training into the regular season. So if we get to a point midway through the season where they might need another lefty, a long uh, inning lefty, uh, you might see one of these guys get the call up uh, as soon as this year. Right. These are two guys that I think if the national, like I say, the nationals bullpen is anything like it has been in years past and they need help, especially left-handers in that, in that bullpen. These are two guys that we could definitely see uh, make their debuts this year. And they're kind of on the opposite ends of the spectrum too. Tim Kate's a smaller guy, uh, really consistent throw strikes, but his velocity has always been an issue. It's always been below average. And then you have Matt Cronin, much bigger guy velocities there in between 94 and 97. Uh, but he struggles. He walks a lot of guys in college. He walked a guy almost every other inning. Um, and it probably most likely these two are both going to be relievers. Matt Cronin was strictly a reliever in college, and it's probably going to be the same with the Nationals. And and Tim Kate looks like he's going to slot much more into a, a reliever role if he gets that velocity up. Um, but like I said, he, he's a smaller guy. But everybody speaks highly of him. Brad Holman speaks highly of him. Sam Naren spoke highly about him on that call. Um, and, and Matt Cronin looks really good, too. Uh, he In 2019 with Hagerstown, he had a sub-1 ERA. Um, and hitters just hit 153 against him. So that's pretty good. He's looked good in his minor league season. And these are two guys you can look at at camp, see the progress they make, and two guys you could see see on the big league roster this year. I think that's a benefit of them being left-handed too. You know, I mean, I mean, throw away the argument that – the obvious one, that being that the Nationals don't have too many lefties in their bullpen to begin with. But I think just being naturally left-handed, that just already gives you a leg up in terms of maybe – jumping the gun or making your debut a little early, unless you are a, a Strasburg, a Giolito, a, you know, a Scherz or something like that. Uh, and you throw left-handed. Uh, but, you know, this gives them flexibility in an arm in the left. I mean, you can go back to Seth Romero. He was projected to be a starter too. And he made his debut last year because he was a lefty and he can eat innings um, and he's got great stuff. And, you know, just the way that lefties throw the baseball, uh, they're able to keep hitters off balance. They're, they're able to throw the ball a little differently. That, adds another weapon to the bullpen that I think Davey Martinez and Mike Rizzo might consider. Again, it, it all depend how it all shakes up. If the Nats bullpen is as good as we think it is, this might be a non-issue. But if it gets to a point where, hey, you know, we're doing really bad against left-handed batters, we need to get some more lefties up here to get these guys out in certain situations, or we need guys to get uh, a couple more innings, bridge that gap until our later arms. We could see them up earlier, sooner rather than later. I mean, and also don't forget Ben Bramer in this conversation too. Probably the only other lefty. You know, I think he's technically still a prospect. He still holds his rookie status, even though he made his debut last year. 
Um, but I mean, he, it can't just be him. So the Nationals shouldn't be afraid to dip into these guys who have been around for a couple of years. They're both 2018 and 2019 respectively draft picks. So uh, it's not like they're, they're fresh guys like Cavalli who haven't even been here for a full calendar year yet. Exactly. And we talk about the lack of lefties in the bullpen at the big league level, but they, there's not a whole lot of lefties in this uh, entire organization. And so these two are really we're one injury away from being in the big, big league roster. I mean, they're the first men up. So middle of the season, it's likely we could see them because they don't have a ton of lefties. And if they need one guy to go up and fill that spot, lefties are a lot, a lot more likely to move up quicker. All right. So to wrap it up, um, are these your two guys that it sounds like it are, because we're high on a lot of these guys, a lot of these arms, and we didn't even get to some of the infielders that we uh, wanted to talk about, but are you high on, uh, Tim Kate and Matt Cronin making their debuts this season. Do you think that's going to happen? Yeah, I think if I'm taking two guys, it's these two. How about you, Bobby? I mean, I, I can see it for all the reasons we just listed uh, in terms of being left-handers, in terms of being a little older than uh, Rutledge and Cavalli. And, and if we do see him, it'll be like they – and also just the fact that they we just saw them do it, right? Like I said with Seth Romero, they just did it, albeit in a shorter season, the 2020 season – had its weird moments, and so that contributed to it too. But, you know, if, if we get to June, uh, maybe mid to late July, uh, and, and Mike Rizzo wants to get them up here to help out this bullpen for the stretch run, wouldn't surprise me at all. So I, I think they're high candidates in terms of because they're lefties. Um, but I, I, uh, I like we said, it, I think it all kind of depends, right? The situation with the big league club will dictate if they really need it. They're not going to bring them up here just for the sake of bringing them up here or just for the sake of having a lefty if they're not ready. If they're not ready and they need a lefty and that matches, great. That's what they'll do. But if one you know, aspect of that equation is out of whack, they're not going to just force, it, force the issue and bring these guys up. But I, I do think they're more likely than the other guys we've talked about uh, for the strict reason of being left-handed. And think about how many guys we saw, not just for the Nationals make their debuts, but how many debuts we saw across baseball last year in that mm-hmm. shortened season. Um, and this season's not going to be just completely normal, I think, as much as we want it to be. And maybe I'll be wrong, and I hope I'm wrong. But there's going to be some some kinks to work out this season, too. And there's there could be you know, uh, heightened injuries this season also. Um, and we could see a lot, de- a lot more debuts. And like I said, one injury away or from, from moving these guys up. Um, is there anybody else that, that you think is noteworthy t- to watch over spring training or could be, you know, close to making their debut, Bobby? Well, we haven't heard uh, too much uh, about them yet. Um, and, and they're not pitchers. I, I wrote down um, uh, Drew Mendoza and Jackson Clough, uh, two infielders. Clough is a shortstop. Um, and Mendoza is, an, is listed as an infielder, first baseman. But in some of the B-roll that we got from the Nationals, he was taking grounders at third base along with Carter Keyboom um, and uh, Adrian Sanchez. So it, it, maybe trying to give him some more flexible options, um, maybe expanding his versatility a little bit. He, I think he played strictly first base uh, for a full his full the last full minor league season, which was in 2019. Um, he made a couple of appearances at third base, but uh, mostly at first base. Uh, these guys are further down the prospect list, though. I mean, they're in the top ten, but they're and they're the only position players uh, in the top ten. Excuse me, sorry, Mendoza is. Uh, Clough is further down the line, um, but you know, it, it's I. I there's so many pitchers in the system, right? And we're going to always talk about pitchers. I just wanted to make sure that we gave uh, some credit to some of the younger guys who are playing in the infield. Um, and, you know, Drew Mendoza is a name that Nationals fans are probably a little familiar with. Clough is, is getting up there. But, you know, being the one of, the, I think, only two, maybe the only one in the top ten of Nationals uh, uh, prospects, I mean, I think he's probably close to making his debut um, uh, maybe closer than Clough. Uh, he was a, a, a pick back in 2019, so he's got at least a part of a minor league season under his belt. Um, but it's it's you know it's all going to dictate. And I I only bring it up because there's still so many questions surrounding the infield for the Nationals, at least at third base. And I thought it was interesting to see him taking ground balls there. Um, you know we know the Nationals moved. Um, uh, Carter Keboom from shortstop, his natural position to second base uh, and to third base uh, be- out of need. And because in anticipation of either Anthony Rendon at the time going down or, or whenever they needed to bring him up, 
Um, so I, it wouldn't surprise me if that's kind of the route they were taking with Mendoza. I'm not saying that they don't have confidence in Carter Keboom to be the everyday third baseman, but I, I'm saying that maybe they're putting in some, you know, a, a security measure right there, right? God forbid something happened to him and Josh Harrison and whoever else will be the backup third baseman. They're giving him some reps at the at the spot uh, to to really uh, to give them a chance, maybe. And uh, he's closer than some of the other guys. You know, uh, his, his numbers aren't fantastic. Uh, looking back in his 2019 season, 55 games, didn't hit 270, hit 264, only four home runs and 12, uh, 25 RBIs. The OPS 760 is not terrible, uh, but not not fantastic. Um, but I, I just think that's a name to keep an eye on uh, in terms of position players. I mean, again, it's a lot of pitchers. So what position players should fans be looking at? Uh, for me, Drew Mendoza and Jackson Clough, um, both 23 and 24-year-olds uh, respectively, are, are names to keep an eye on that could possibly make their debuts this year. I'm not saying they definitely will, but, you know, they're in the mix. Right. I think uh, what you mentioned about uh, Drew Mendoza seeing him take some reps at third base is probably noteworthy because it seemed like the Nationals made him a 100 percent first baseman. Um, But him taking reps at third, maybe they like what they see out of his arm. um, And maybe that that's good news for him that they could see him at the big league level one day or to at least have that option. Um, Mm -hmm. Did I cut you off? I'm sorry. (laughs) No, you're good. Oh, okay. (laughs) Uh, yeah, so, so I mean, I just I didn't want to. And, of course, there are a couple of other names, too, um, that I don't know if they're, they're technically prospects, um, but, you know, we just don't have the time to get to all of them. But just, you know, I mean, Todd Peterson is a right-handed pitcher that Davey has brought up. So is Tyler Dyson. Um, of course, everyone knows about Rowdy Reed, Israel Pineda, um, backup catchers. Jackson Reitz is a guy, too. Uh, we haven't heard too much about him yet, but he is a catcher in the system. And we talked recently about how they need catching depth um, in this organization because Jan Gomes is only here for a year. Um, Alex Avia has only signed a one-year deal. So what's the long-term future of that position? Um, and a couple of outfielders, Carlo Tucci and, and Cody Wilson. Those are names to keep an eye on. You know, you might not see them every day uh, from uh, David Martinez's press conference. You might not even hear too much of them or from us about them until once minor league camp gets started, which is oddly enough is going to be when major league camp ends uh, due to the COVID pandemic. But uh, just something to keep an eye on and guys to put on your radar for you Nationals fans um, as the Nationals farm system gets underway and hopefully the minor league season gets in full swing. Yep, these are. This is an added uh, storyline, right? We went through all the major league storylines to look through over uh, spring training last year, but this is fun, guys. That go under the radar, uh, see how they develop, and see where they could slot into this team one day. Yeah, so it's it's, it's we're going to be trying to do that the most. Um, you know, um, I, I think that uh, uh, the, our mass and coverage is going to su- is suffering obviously a big hole with uh, the loss of Byron Kerr uh, moving on from us uh, over the past a couple of weeks. He did a great job covering the minor league season. So we're hoping that we will step into that role uh, and bring you all the great minor league coverage throughout the Nats farm system throughout the course of the year, throughout the course of spring training and, and fall instructs. Uh, we're hoping to fill that gap for you guys uh, listening and watching and reading um, from your home as a throughout the course of the season. So stick with us. Um, that's pretty much going to do it for this week's episode of the mass and all access podcast. We thank you all so much for tuning in. Um, whether that was, uh, watching live on Facebook, YouTube, or Twitter, or if you're catching it after the fact now on Spotify, Apple podcasts, SoundCloud, Google play, wherever you get podcasts, hopefully you're checking out, uh, the mass and all access podcast at Amy Jennings news is Amy on Twitter. Be sure to give her a follow, uh, she has a couple interviews lined up as well. She'll be putting out some packages uh, on her Twitter account and the Mass and Nationals Twitter account, of course, over the next couple of weeks. Uh, so be sure to give her a follow. I'm at Bobby underscore Blanco. Also, be sure I, te- I, I didn't really tease this, but I, I, I promoted this last week. Be sure to follow Mass and Nationals on the YouTube channel, not just for us. All the coverage of spring training is going on our YouTube channel. Every press conference, every interview. Um, some highlight packages from the B-roll we're getting from the Nationals, which we really appreciate. Uh, the Nationals PR staff and communication staff providing that for us. So if you're not already, subscribe to the Mass and Nationals on YouTube. A lot of great content throughout spring training is on there. And, of course, check out more coverage on MassInSports.com. Amy, thanks so much for joining me. We'll talk to you next week. See you next week.
All right, that's going to do it. Everyone stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy. Enjoy the sunshine while we can. I think it's supposed to rain this week, so get outside. Hopefully, maybe you're listening to us on uh, in a little power walk uh, on, on your, on your uh, podcast app, uh, wherever you may be. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Stay safe. 